This video is brought to you by SoccerPro.com, bringing you all the latest soccer gear at everyday low prices with no membership fees. Don't forget to use coupon code SR4U at checkout for 10% off any order of $75 or more. Hey guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com, bringing you a comparison video between arguably two of the most popular lightweight shoes currently on the market, and that is the Nike Mercurial Vapor 9 and the Adidas F50 Adi Zero My Coach 2. Before I get on with the comparison video, I just wanted to let you guys know that there are full written reviews for both of these shoes already up on my website. So if you want all the details as to how these shoes fit, feel, and perform, I strongly recommend going ahead and checking out those full written reviews, which you can find linked down below in the description. As far as comparing the Vapor and the Adi Zero, um, that's always the one big comparison video that I make every year when a new model comes out and everybody always is contemplating between both of these two shoes if they're on the market for a lightweight soccer shoe at least most of the time and everybody always wants to know which one is better than the other and I wouldn't say that one is better than the other simply because they're such different shoes just in terms of feel um, obviously they have different options this time around the I Zero is available in both synthetic as well as leather and then we actually see a variation with the Vapor 9 this year as well you have the option to choose the speed control version which has this golf ball dimpling on it or a non speed control version which is more along the lines of a traditional Vapor in terms of feel and uh, that's in this platinum color like I have here so does it really make that big of a difference in terms of what you choose with the Vapor not so much with the Adi Zero of course it'll make a huge difference between choosing thin synthetic or um, a more padded leather, more traditional feeling soccer shoe. So it really does depend on your own personal preferences and what you personally like the feel of rather than saying one is better than the other because that's just not the case here. If we start off with the uppers on both of these two shoes, um, they're very, very different. When it comes to synthetics, you guys have probably heard me say this before, Nike is the top dog here and I'm still going to say that if you want to buy a synthetic soccer shoe, Nike is still the way to go. Um, this new synthetic or Tatian synthetic used on this speed control upper here is probably one of the nicest thin synthetics that I've personally ever used. It strays away from the super barefoot feel of past versions of the Mercurial Vapor. It has like a little bit of like, uh, I want to say artificial cushioning to it with this little dimpling over top. But like I said, if you don't like that, if you want something more along the lines of a traditional Vapor, then the platinum colorway without the dimpling is the way to go. But as far as what this new synthetic feels like, it has just a little bit more thickness to it than the last Mercurial Vapor 8. It's still very, very thin as you guys can see and it's going to provide next to no, nothing in terms of protection. But in terms of having that nice soft touch on the ball while still maintaining a very thin upper, you're going to get that from the Nike Mercurial Vapor 9. Also worth mentioning is that you do have ACC All Conditions Control technology on all the top end Nike models, which is essentially like a wet control element. So it's going to allow for a little bit better friction between your foot and the ball when playing in wet weather conditions. So that's something that you can't go wrong with and it's always an upside to any of the top end Nike shoes. As far as the synthetic version of the F50 Adi Zero is concerned, um, again, Adidas they haven't always had the best synthetics in my opinion, but this is by far the best synthetic that they have ever put out on the Adi Zero. It's a very thin single layer sprint skin material as you guys can see the branding right there. And it has pretty much no artificial padding to it whatsoever. For that reason it's not as soft, it's a little bit more rigid, but it's going to provide a very true barefoot feel on the ball. And because the fit is much improved on this version of the synthetic Adi Zero, um, the touch is going to be much improved as well. You're also going to notice that there's a little bit of texturing on the upper and that doesn't do so much as far as providing grip. It doesn't work at all like the speed control, but it just gives that little bit of extra dimension to the upper when you're touching the ball, which is something that I personally really like. Um, as far as thinness goes, this is by far a much thinner upper than what you're going to get on either versions of the um, Nike Mercurial Vapor. And for that reason, it feels a little bit closer to the foot. But the Vapors, for me, provide a much softer touch on the ball, simply because the synthetic feels a lot softer to the touch, and for me, fits a little bit tighter than that of the Adi Zero. Not a big deal, but it is a small difference that you should know about. Um, as far as the leather version of the Adi Zero is concerned, this is where you have some pretty big variation when it comes to the Adi Zero. Um, again, everybody always asks what's the best version of the Adi Zero, leather or synthetic, and I actually do have a comparison video of those if you do want to check that out. But there really isn't one that's better. It's down to your own personal preference. If you prefer a more traditional leather touch, then the leather Adi Zero is what you should go for. If you like that barefoot feel, then I strongly recommend going for the synthetic model. 
The other major thing to talk about here is going to be the sole plates and the stud patterns. Um, when we look at the sole plate and stud pattern of the Nike Mercurial Vapor 9, it's very, very unique. We're, today we're going to be talking about the firm ground models just overall. Um, firm ground is designed for use on natural grass plane surfaces. So let's just get that out of the way. Neither of these two shoes are designed for soft ground or especially artificial grass slash turf. If you're going to be playing on those types of surfaces, you really should go for an AG stud pattern. As far as the Vapor 9 sole plate is concerned though, you have a full two layer glass fiber sole plate on this model and then the other variation has the split two layers and then one layer in the forefoot. Again, does it make that big of a difference in terms of feel? Not really, but it does have some good rigidity. It keeps you nice and low to the ground and has some pretty good flexibility where you need it as well. As far as the stud pattern is concerned, it's somewhat unusual for a firm ground stud pattern. You have basically six studs making up the stud pattern itself, two studs in the back and four main studs in the forefoot with one support stud in the middle. It kind of acts as all of your push off points on the shoe and really does work well. I have some videos of the Vapors in action or the Vapor stud pattern. So if you do want to check that out, I will leave some annotations on screen. And again, if you want more details on the overall performance, I strongly recommend going ahead and checking out that forward and review. If we go to the Addy Zero, this is also a very revolutionary stud pattern and sole plate combo, simply because it was one of the first ones that really brought us that ultra lightweight feel um, that a lot of people look for nowadays when they're buying a lightweight soccer shoe. The sprint frame is a one piece plastic sole plate and heel counter combo and really is lightweight. And this is the second variation that we've seen on the uh, sprint frame itself. It's a lot more rigid than the original model and for that reason feels a lot more responsive in my opinion. Um, as far as the stud pattern itself is concerned, um, the stud pattern hasn't really changed all that much from the original Addy Zero design. You have what are these triangular studs that have a little bit bigger surface area than most firm ground stud patterns. So for that reason, they don't really dig into the ground as easy as, let's say, a Nike Mercurial Vapor 9 will. But again, for the most part, they're still going to provide some pretty good traction. It's kind of like giving you the best of both worlds between a conical stud pattern and a bladed stud pattern, and that you have some pretty good grip at push off, but there's still enough maneuverability once your foot is planted to where you don't feel like you're stuck into the ground, which is what you're going to get from the Nike Mercurial Vapor 9. And again, it really comes down to your own personal preferences and what you like better in terms of feel rather than saying that one is better than the other. Um, um, again, both of these two stud patterns are really designed to be used on really nice natural grass plane surfaces. So if you're going to be playing on harder ground, neither of these two stud patterns are really going to perform as good as they are capable of, simply because the studs aren't going to be able to dig in um, as much as they should to perform optimally. So just keep that in mind. Like I said, if you're playing on firm natural surfaces, both of these stud patterns are going to perform fantastic. Um, but that's pretty much it as far as comparing the two shoes. I'll move on to a quick weigh-in so we can see exactly how light these two models are. The MV9 and the Addy Zero are both very lightweight shoes. Both in hand and on feet, the shoes feel like they almost don't weigh anything. And have to, if I had to pick a winner in terms of what feels a little bit lighter on feet, it would be the synthetic Addy Zero, but again, not by much at all. I'm gonna throw them on the scale for you guys so you can see exactly what they weigh in real time. Keep in mind that all the pairs that I'm gonna weigh for you are size nine US and they are used pairs. So we're gonna throw on the Vapor 9 first so you can see exactly what that weighs. And it weighs in at 6.9 ounces so it's still below that seven ounce mark very very lightweight for given the solid construction of the shoe itself we're going to move on to the synthetic addy zero again used pair size 9 us and it weighs in at six ounces so 0.9 ounces less than the uh, mercurial vapor also keep in mind to have the lightweight insole in here so that will shave off about 0.5 ounces on, on this weigh in we're also going to throw on the leather version of the addy zero again this is a used pair in a size 9 us and it weighs in at 7.05 ounces. So just a little bit more than the Vapor and about an ounce more than the uh, synthetic version of the Addy Zero. So again, there's not a whole lot of difference in terms of variation of weight that you're actually going to feel on feet. If you want to go for the all time lightest model, then definitely it is the synthetic version. Not all time as in the lightest you ever made, but the lightest model out of the ones we're comparing here, it is the synthetic model of the Addy Zero. But again, it really depends on the fit and what you're gonna be more, most comfortable with rather than counting a couple 0.1 ounces on the shoe. It really doesn't make all that difference in the long run. So that's pretty much it as far as the weigh-in is concerned and we'll move on to an on-feet portion so you can see exactly how these shoes fit. All right, here's a look at the synthetic version of the Addy Zero and the speed control version of the MV9 on feet. And when it comes to fit, it's very hard to beat out the Nike Mercurial Vapor 9. It's arguably one of the best fitting soccer shoes, leather or synthetic, on the market, period, in my opinion. 
it fits really really well but in order to achieve such a tight fitting soccer shoe it definitely does have a much more narrow fit than that of the Adi Zero and that's not to say that the Adi Zero is not a narrow fitting shoe either um, if you wanted to compare the fit of these two shoes in the toe box and forefoot area the MV9 is definitely a much tighter fitting shoe I don't know if you guys can really see that whereas the Adi Zero while it does fit relatively tight I still have a little bit of extra room for width in the forefoot and toe box of the shoe. As far as the midfoot is concerned, the midfoot on the MV9 really hugs your foot nice and tight. There's pretty much no excess room inside the shoe at all. And that goes on the inside and the outside of the shoe. Where again, as the Adi Zero has just a little bit of extra room still, you can see there's a little bit more slack in the actual laces themselves. On the Vapor 9, I'm pretty much at the maximum foot width that you can possibly have to wear these. Whereas the Addies here, I could have a slightly wider foot and still be able to fit in them no problem. As far as the fit in the heel is concerned, I would actually say that the Addies Zero fits a little bit narrower in the heel than the Vapor does. But again, the fit is still very similar between the two. It's slightly lower cut in the Vapor if you ask me. But again, there's very slight difference there. As far as synthetic is concerned, the synthetic is a lot softer on the MV9. As you guys can see when I flex my foot, there's very little creasing in the synthetic itself, which is pretty impressive. Whereas when I flex my foot on the synthetic version of the Adi Zero, there's a lot of creasing and rippling in the upper. And while it doesn't really change the overall feel of the shoe, it just shows how much better the MV9 actually does fit. As far as sizing goes, sizing is true to size on both of these two models. I'm wearing size 9 in both the MV9 and the Adi Zero, and the fit is absolutely perfect. So if you are looking to order a pair for yourself, I strongly recommend going true to size. That's pretty much it as far as the on-feet portion with these two shoes, and we'll show the other two upper variations next. All right, here's a look at the leather Addy Zero and the non-dimpled version of the Nike Mercurial Vapor 8. Again, both of these shoes fit really well. If we start with the MV9, it fits identical to the dimpled version. So again, very narrow in the toe box, forefoot area, very narrow through the midfoot, and just a little bit wider in the heel, but for the most part, just fits really well. Like I said, probably the best fitting, lightweight, thin synthetic soccer shoe currently on the market. When it comes to the leather Addy Zero, that's where the variation on the fit is going to come with the lightweight speed boots that I've kind of showed in this video. The leather version of the Addy Zero has that ability to stretch that none of the other synthetic models that I have showed have that ability. So if you do have a wider foot, this is definitely the option that you should probably take a look at if you are looking to have as light of a shoe as possible. Obviously it is the heaviest technically of all the models that I've shown but again the difference in weight is very very minimal it's going to allow for a lot more width in the toe box forefoot and midfoot simply because the leather is going to have the ability to stretch on this shoe so like I said if you do need a little bit wider fit the leather version of the Adi Zero is definitely what you're looking for but again keep in mind that the leather version also has a much different fit from that of the thin synthetic options as far as sizing goes with both of these two models they both fit true to size just like the other ones. So if you are looking to get a pair for yourself, I strongly recommend going true to size. I'm wearing my usual size 9 US in both models and the fit in length is absolutely perfect. That's pretty much it as far as the on feet portion of this video is concerned and I'll leave you to my final thoughts. All right guys, that's it for my comparison video between the Nike Mercurial Vapor 9 and the Adidas F50 Adi Zero My Coach 2. I know you guys always like to find out what my personal favorite is. And if I had to pick two, it would be the dimpled version of the Nike Mercurial Vapor 9 and the leather version of the Adi Zero. If you want to read more into why these are my personal favorites, go ahead and check out the four reviews which you can find linked down below in the description. Tons of information you're going to find in those reviews. All the details as to how these shoes fit, feel, and perform. So if you really are interested in ordering one of them, I strongly recommend checking those out. Not only on those review pages are you going to find the full written reviews, you're also going to find high quality images of all of these models that will give you a better idea as to how it actually does look in person, as well as buy now links with the best prices online, including some exclusive SR4U coupon codes to get you guys some additional discounts if you are interested in ordering a pair for yourself. If you have any questions regarding this particular comparison, feel free to leave a comment down below and if you could leave a like on the video, it would be greatly appreciated. Um, if you do have any questions not related to the video, feel free to ask that on my Facebook fan page, which you can find linked down below in the description. And if you're not following me on Instagram, my Instagram is Josh. Just like this channel name, you can go ahead and look me up. Or again, the link will be found down below in the description. One last thing, if you're not subscribed to the channel already and you did enjoy today's video, be sure to hit that subscribe button for daily videos on all the latest soccer gears, such as unboxing, reviews, some free kicks, comparison videos like you saw today. Lots of good stuff, so be sure to hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed already. Other than that, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, thanks for watching.